Thank you, thank you. That's warming us up for the Sandy Patty concert, I think, sir. Great job. Everybody doing well this morning? I am glad. I tell you, it's our thank you to the choir and the orchestra. And uh, it's also great to look out. I don't know if you have noticed the abundance of babies in our church. I tried to get from my office to the uh, sanctuary this morning, and there was, a, there was a baby jam right there in the middle of the narthex. You couldn't get through for all the folks staying. And uh, also found out this morning that we have a new one on the way, that uh, Pete and Mallory uh, Michelson are going to be welcoming a new child uh, as well. So th the hits just keep on coming. Uh, Sarah, in 12 years, you will have the most amazing youth ministry. We're, we're playing. It's, it's, I tell you, it's, it's rolling here. It is a joy to be together and, again, to say another huge thank you to Phil. After our service today, we will have a time out in the North X. We encourage you to take your time leaving. Come by and, and just love on the lilies for a little bit. The good news is they will not be leaving us. They're still going to be around and part of the church family, continuing to teach and, and serve in other capacities, but with just a lot more freedom. And uh, we cannot say thank you enough. So in, in honor, as I'm working through the series on followers, I thought it would be uh, a good idea this morning on the, the date that we honor our brother Phil uh, to talk about the Apostle Philip and to uh, learn a few things from him. You know, when you think about it, if I ask you what is Paul known for, you could tell me. If I ask you what do you know Peter for, what are they, they, they stand out. Uh, Philip is a little more understated, Philip the Apostle. And we began to walk through, it, it's interesting in the tradition, he was from the same hometown as Andrew and Simon, they probably knew each other as they were growing up, but he, but he lived in that shadow uh, just a little bit as he, he came into the world of being an apostle. But yeah, he shows up in some pretty important places and he gives voice to what you and I are thinking and probably would say given the opportunity and for that we're grateful. Uh, Phil, you, you'd also, I bet you didn't know that you were named after the patron saint of hat makers and pastry chefs. <laughs> you can work with that. That's, that's good. Uh, you know, I, 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 that's just one of those trivia things. Uh, I named my oldest son after the patron saint of lost causes. Uh, true story. True story. Didn't know that at the time, but he's, he's not a lost cause. He just helps lost causes, so. But as we look at the life of Philip, one of the great scriptures where he shows up is in John, the 14th chapter. Grab your Bibles and look there if you would. And this is a text that uh, is one of the most uh, important ones in our Christian faith. It's most known for the verses that precede where we are today. But it's a great discussion that Jesus has with Philip and the rest of the disciples right before the Passion. So we have fast-forwarded a few weeks to where Jesus is, is right up against going into Jerusalem. It's right before the, the trial and the crucifixion, and Jesus is having his last words with his disciples. And we're familiar with the first parts of that chapter. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. You know those, those words. As he begins to say, in my Father's house are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place for you. Where I am, there you may be also. Very familiar words to us as Christians. Often ones that we speak when we come to the graveside to remind us of the hope that is out there in the future. So Jesus is preparing to... Uh, announce his departure from his disciples. They are troubled by this. He is trying very hard to speak comfort into a troubling situation. And his, his two tools for doing that is the promise of his presence with them today and the promise of the hope of the future. So he began speaking in, in these terms. And then Thomas uh, gives voice by saying, Lord, we don't know what you're talking about. Would you explain this to us? And Jesus has this habit of taking misunderstanding and using it as a teachable moment 
to expound on the truth. And when he says to Thomas, well, here's, here's the way. Here, here's the GPS to heaven. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. That powerful verse that says, I am the way. The, the idea of him telling who he is is a huge part of Jesus' story. Uh, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. Uh, I am the living water. He continues to, to give us his identity. And we, we carry on a little further with that. Jesus said those things. And then we get to the rest of the passage, beginning with uh, verse 6 and following. Where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. And Philip said, Lord, just show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Lord, just let us see who the Father is, and and we'll be satisfied. And then Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been around and among you for such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith uh, in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will also do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask for anything in my name and I will do it. Now, that's a powerful passage that carries us through. But what we want to, uh, to, to focus on today is Philip's request and what that says to us in terms of finding out who Jesus is and how we can understand God through the person of Jesus. Now, that's basic to our faith. You, you kind of say, well, Glenn, that, that, that's Christianity 101, and it is. But you would be surprised at at how many folks struggle with that. And even those of us who have been in the faith a long time sometimes get distracted from that very basic truth that if we want to know the person of God to live in us and through us, it happens through the person of Jesus. And we take a hard look at what that is about. Now, in the, the passage, there's an urgency. Part of the urgency is that our he knows Jesus just said, I'm about to leave you. And, and it's a little bit like what happens when parents get up in the house and they put their coats on and they get ready to leave and the children are there. Children will always in that situation have three questions, okay? If you get up to go somewhere, what's the first thing your kid's going to ask you? Where are you going? Okay? Now, okay? And, and the second thing they will ask you is what? Can I go too? Can I go too? And then the third question is, well, who's staying with us? Now, isn't it kind of interesting that Jesus plays that drama out right here with his disciples? Where are you going? I'm going back to where I came from. I, I'm going to the Father. I, I'm going to return to where I am. There you may be also. Can we go with you? Not just yet. In time, you'll get there. But I've, I'm going to leave you here because you've got work to do. You're going to leave, I'm going to leave you here to carry out my purpose. Who's going to stay with us? I will not leave you comfortless. I will leave the Spirit with you. And because of that, I will give you the opportunity to, to have a relationship with God through me that makes even more things possible than you could ever, ever have imagined. So he answers those questions. Where are you going? Can we go? Who's staying with us? And there Jesus lives out out as well. 
Now, as we wander through this text, you've got Thomas the skeptic who says, Lord, we don't know. Later on, we find Thomas the doubter saying, Lord, I, I won't believe it unless I see it. And then we have Philip with his request that simply says, show us the Father. Show us the Father. To which Jesus' response is, Philip, look closer. Philip, look closer. Have you ever seen somebody that you, you thought you recognized? And it turns out they were the person you, you thought they were? I was standing years ago in Athens, Georgia, in Morrison's Cafeteria. Y'all remember Morrison's? I tell you what, man, that's when you knew it was a big day in our family. You got to go to Morrison's and order two meats. That was, that was a celebration, that was celebration day if you got to do that, you know. You go, go by and you point at whatever you want. Well, we're standing in line one evening at Morrison's Cafeteria, and there's this guy in front of us. He's about, about my height, a little more rotund, uh, gray beard, distinguished looking fella. I looked at Lisa and I said, you know, honey, I bet that guy gets tired of being told he looks like Kenny Rogers. And then I heard the voice. The voice that knew when to hold him and knew when to fold him. And I'm going, my goodness, that is Kenny Rogers. Jesus is standing there before his disciples and he's saying to them, don't you see who I am? I don't just look like the Father, I am the Father. There's a sense he wanted to say to, uh, to, to, to Philip in this, this situation, Philip, I, is that really your question? Where were you when, when I was, was turning the water into wine at the wedding of Cana? You were there? How about when, I, when we, we raised the dead to life? When we, we healed the lame and we gave sight to the blind? You, you were there whenever we forgave sins and sent folks in a new direction. You were there, Philip, whenever we showed the picture of what God was like and what he was doing in me and through me because I and the Father are one. Now, that's basic theology to us as Christians, but it's a powerful picture that we do not want to miss we want to make sure that when we look at, at the Father, we know, when we look at the Son, we know we're looking at the Father. And it's not just the picture, it's the relationship. It's the relationship. Do you know there's nothing satisfying about saying, you know, I, I really do believe there is a God. I really do believe that there's a higher power. I really do believe that there's something bigger than us. That, that perhaps helps us somewhat, but... To come to the point where we go, there is a God, and I can see him, and I can know him, and be in relationship with him. That carries us to a different place altogether. And that's what Jesus was offering, and Jesus was saying here in this text, uh, I've been in relationship with you for three years, Philip. Take a hard look. This is what God is like. If you want to know what God is like, we look at the person of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to help me preach this part of the sermon. Just give me some one word, simple adjectives, simple words that describe God because we've seen it in the life of Jesus. God is what? He is holy. Holy. He is different. He is other than. God is, God is love. God is, I'm hearing other words. He is kind. He's merciful. He's patient. He's faithful. He is just. He is what else? He is beautiful. He's wonderful. He, he, he's a healer. I should have started with the choir, man. They've got these things down up here. I'll tell you what. Now, why, why do I bring all that up? Here's, here's the deal. When we want to know what God is like, you look at the person of Jesus Christ. And you say, okay. God is loving, God is kind, God is merciful, God is caring, God is healing, 
God is all-powerful. God is all-knowing. God is all of these things. And we, we know that because here's the picture. If you want to know what God values, pay attention to what Jesus valued. If you want to know what God sees in people, take a look at how Jesus treated people. If you want to know what breaks God's heart, look at the things that broke Jesus' heart. And then let it break ours as well. But here is the call for all of us as Christians. Is that being in relationship with Jesus carries with it the assignment of living out the character of God. It carries with it the obligation to say, as God is and has shown himself to be through Jesus, we are called to be also. We can't just separate that out. We can't just take that and put it in a different place. We can't treat that as an option. It is a matter of saying, if we look at Jesus, we see the Father. And Jesus is saying that that, that God is in me, and he can be in you too through me, through the relationship that we share. Now, folks, that is so, so important for all of us. Deep down, I think there's a longing to know and to be known. And there's a longing for us to know what God is really like and what he calls on us to be. So let's go back again to Philip's question, his request. Show us the Father. And so he said, well, well, Philip, you've been looking. Take a look. But if you really want to see it, watch where we go from here. Because it is in that moment that he set his foot toward Jerusalem. And all of a sudden we found the Father whose son is loving and serving and giving and dying to self so that others might have life. That's the kind of God that he is. And as we look deep into the life of Christ, we see it firsthand. What a precious opportunity we have to be able to say, Lord, I believe that. Lord, you can live in me through your Son, and then you can help me know how I live by looking at the life of the Son and living that out. And I am amazed every day at how oftentimes we can be religiously very well trained. We can know deep, deep truths of faith and then miss some of the basics about how we treat folks, how we live out our lives as people who know him. Now, here's the great news, is that God wants us to find him, and he sent his son in order to do that. You know, one of these days, Miss Lena is going to play hide-and-seek. She's fixing to go practice right now. Did you ever play hide-and-seek when you were kids? You know, you would, you would find your, your great hiding places that you, you would go. How many of y'all were really good at it? How many of you were really rotten at it? Okay. How many of you let your little brother or sister go hide and never looked for them? <laughs> you know, we, we've all, we've all kind of, you know, that's, that's, that's the laugh of truth. Fred Craddock tells a story about playing hide-and-seek with his family. They were poor. That was the biggest game they ever had. And they were playing, and he found the perfect hiding place. He got underneath the front porch, back under the house, and, and hid back in there. And, and he, he watched his sister hunt all over the place to try to find him. She looked in, in, in the bar. She looked in the corn crib. She looked all around. She looked everywhere she could look and going. And he goes, man, I am in the perfect place. He said after about an hour, it dawned on him. He said, man, she'll never find me here. And then it hit him. She'll never find me here. <laughs> and so he said, I, so I stuck out a toe. And she saw it and said, oh, I found you. He goes, oh, shucks, yes, you found me. 
They ask the question, that really want to define me? Well, if I was just playing hide and seek. No, I wanted to win. But you know, I really did want to be found. Here's an amazing thing that ties us back to the question of Philip. Is that there is a God who wants to be found. He wants to be seen for who he is. So much so that he sent his only begotten son so that while we're playing our game of divine hide and seek, if we see him, we will see the Father. He didn't want to keep it secret from us. He warned us to know this is who I am. This is what I'm about. This is what I'm like. This is how you relate to me. But the one who wants to be found is also the one who wants to find you and me. You heard it played so beautifully this morning by Melody and and, and, and Lenny. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. What's the next line? But now I'm found. This morning... Let's take a hard look into the heart and the life of Jesus, the one that we follow, and know that that's how we find God. And it's through him that God finds us. And let us live out that deep longing to find and to be found. And just like Philip, we can say, Lord, if I can see that, I'll be satisfied, and that will be enough. It was for him. It is for you and me. Let's pray together. Father, it was was Philip who asked the tough question, made the hard request. It was Philip who heard that there were some people who wanted to see Jesus and brought him to him. It was Philip whose friend came to him and introduced him to Christ and who immediately went and found another friend to introduce. It was Philip who gave voice to our deepest heart. At the end of the day, we really want to see the Father. We want to know what you're like. We want to know what you value. We want to know what's important to you. We want to know what you're doing in the world and how our life lines up with that purpose. We want to know what you think of us and what you'd like to do with our lives. The Lord, the, the view's fuzzy. Watch for Philip. Sometimes it is for us. But help us to see clearly. That when we look at your son, we see you. You live in him. Through him, you live in us. That is the good news of the gospel. Make us joyful recipients of that. And then send us forward to be the kind of people that are satisfied to know and to serve and to follow and to be like the Christ who is the perfect picture of the Father. For it's in his name that we pray. Amen. We're going to stand together and sing an old hymn of the faith, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus." And it's an invitation for us to trust in all the areas of our lives. Stand together. As we sing this song, respond as God would lead in the moments that we share.